There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hey, I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money. And today we have a millennial music chat with Penny and Sparrow. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. As a business to business marketer, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long, and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn Ads empowers marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn Ads allows you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. You'll have direct access to 875 million members, 180 million senior-level executives, and 10 million C-level executives. You'll be able to drive results with targeting and measurement tools built specifically for B2B. And you'll work with a partner who respects the B2B world you operate in. LinkedIn Ads is also ranked number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash advertise to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash advertise. Terms and conditions apply. Our good friend of the podcast, singer-songwriter Drew Holcomb, turned us on to this week's musical guest, Penny and Sparrow. Drew's exact words, actually, were Penny and Sparrow are legit. You need to check them out. So check them out. We did. And now we become huge fans of this Texas duo. And we really wanted to get them on the podcast. Uh, So we did. Uh, So this week we have Penny and Sparrow. Andy Baxter, actually, from Penny and Sparrow. Uh, Just a few short years ago, Penny and Sparrow were college friends at the University of Texas. And music wasn't even on their post-graduation plans. Now the duo are dropping their fifth album, Windigo, on September 1st. And it's their fifth album in just a short number of years, actually. After we got our hands on an advanced copy of Windigo, it's now been in serious heavy rotation in our house and ranks up there as one of the best albums of 2017 that I've listened to all year long. I really absolutely love this album. I've listened to it over and over again. Um, and it actually has like 14 tracks. I think, to me, that's unheard of for albums these days. But this 14-track album is sonically beautiful and goes deeper lyrically than any of their previous albums. And 
they also fuse together a stunning musical soundscape as the backdrop to to their really great lyrics. Pretty much, if you if before you hear them, you know, think about Bonnie Veer meets Mumford and Sons, maybe meets you know the beautiful lyrics of uh, the Beach Boys. Uh, I really love these guys. So lead singer and all around cool dude Andy Baxter joined us from his home in Alabama for a great interview. And we talked about uh, a lot of different topics, um, such as what were their real post-college plans? Uh, the mythical beast that this album, Wendigo, takes its name. Uh, also, surviving as a Texas college football fan in the dynasty-driven state of Alabama. That's probably a hard one there. I don't think I could take it. And we talked about geeking out on Christmas album being that they released another Christmas or a Christmas album last fall. So enjoy our conversation with lead man from Penny and Sparrow, Andy Baxter. Thanks for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, so you and Kyle, uh, your other bandmate, um, you guys met in college in Texas um, and you formed Penny and Sparrow. Did you guys have music majors at the time or were you kind of following uh, a, a career in music, if you will? Oh, quite far from it. Kyle was set to go and work eventually for the CDC and he, uh, he was getting his master's at the time that we really started hanging out. His master's is in biology. He's one of the smartest fellows that I have the privilege of knowing on this earth. And yours truly was in the five and a half year plan to get a bachelor's degree (laughs) in uh, film and history. And so neither one of us were doing anything in music whatsoever. That is outside of having, um, you know, an affinity and enjoyment of it and, we would mess around in the house just singing Ryan Adams cover songs for our roommates at the time. And it sort of all began there just as a hobby. Gotcha. So, I mean, so even like kind of growing up, did you, you know, were you into music or did you play instruments and stuff or? Well, growing up, we would definitely, well, let me back up. Kyle was a drummer first. And so gotcha. he would sing, he would never really sing or play guitar mm-hmm. because that wasn't his thing. He, he only started learning guitar as a way to deal with the stress of grad school. <laughs> And so, and yours truly, uh, I did a whole bunch of like church choir stuff growing up and did um, some musicals and things like that. But uh, I was more than certain that uh, whatever voice talent I had gotten in this life, it was not enough to ever make money doing it. So I was just going to do this as a hobby because, hell, I like to sing. It was fun. I enjoyed it. And why not? When you have a, a roommate who's learning how to play the guitar and you both like really sad bastard folk songs, why not sing them and learn how to harmonize? Well, when was that, that time where it clicked and you said, you know what, we really should make this a band? Well, again, like even saying that we wanted to make it a band, like it, it was accidental, to be honest with you. And I'm not being yeah. coy. I, yeah. I mean, we started to do this. The very roots of Penny and Sparrow were based mm-hmm. out of this. Hey, wouldn't it be cool, Kyle, if we, uh, on a little homemade recording rig, recorded an album and we just researched what it would be like to put it on iTunes, mm-hmm. and that way, for the sake of posterity, we'd be able to look our kids in the face one day and say, hey, you know your old man's got a record of it. <laughs> right. And that was, that was authentically why we did it. So we wrote uh-huh. three songs, not thinking that anybody in the world other than our blood kin and mm-hmm. our, our buddies were going to listen to it. And then all of a sudden, it actually got passed around a bit word of mouth in the UT campus, which was really cool. Uh-huh. And uh, then we decided it was the, it was, you know, the dawn of the era of Kickstarter. Yeah. And so uh, we were like, well, hell, uh, this was fun. We've got other jobs. We like our other jobs. But what uh-huh. if we just did a Kickstarter and then joined up with uh, Chris, who was Kyle's buddy from high school, uh-huh. and made another record? And so we made our first full-length record entirely comprised and of and funded by um, the, the money of our plan. bodies and our family. Wow. wow that's, 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 that's quite a feat there. Was there a backup plan uh, if, if music didn't work out? 
Well, music was just a total hobby. I mean, there was yeah, no yeah, backup yeah. plan. We weren't yeah. even really trying it. The backup plan was yeah. just to keep on going with whatever jobs we had and we were going well, for. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> was, what was the, what, what you said you wanted to do uh, film and stuff like that. What were you kind of looking towards kind of getting into? Oh, dude, I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> I had I had three jobs. I, right. I, literally, I was a CrossFit coach. Uh, I used to work for Jason's Deli, Smallwares Factory. I mean, it was I had weird jobs in college. I worked for a nonprofit called Young Life. I, mm-hmm. I was all over the map. And uh, Kyle, again, like I said, was working biological research uh, under a professor mm-hmm. and going to grad school, and eventually had aspirations to go and work in public health. Sure, right, right. <laughs> and, and so music was literally like, hey, I literally just think we should do this to see what happens. It'd be really fun. We'll blow off some steam, and it'll be a great gag when we're in our 50s and we can embarrass our kids. <laughs> exactly. And then uh, uh, it sort of gathered steam unexpectedly. Just, you're right. I was going to say, it sort of gathered steam, and, and, now, and now you guys are on, what, what album is number is this? Uh, this will be our fifth full-length album. Yeah, you guys sort of seem to crank them out um, pretty quickly. It, it was definitely a goal of ours early on. Once we mm-hmm. said, like, hey, let's quit our jobs and really give this a go, we mm-hmm. sort of labeled what some things uh, as a band, like what we would want to be about. Like, what would we want to be true about us or said about us? And to be prolific was at the top of that list because all the bands that we love are constantly creating and making things and getting mm-hmm. sharper. I mean, you right. look at from, from the multiple – uh, bands that Justin Vernon has to mm-hmm. Anais Mitchell and all the side projects that turn into Broadway musical and mm-hmm. anybody, the Beatles, I mean, anybody that we have wanted to emulate have all been prolific artists. And so that's just a thing that we've tried to do. Right. What were you listening to as a kid kind of growing up in, in Texas uh, that, you know, kind of, you kind of had some musical aspirations? Uh, I, I go on a ton of Broadway and a ton of '90s country. Uh, when I was with my when I was with my mom and with my uh-huh. dad, it was uh, classic rock. It was all you know from the Beatles to Skinner to Three Dog Night to Fog Hat to Queen. Um, so all of that stuff was I, I had it coming from both sides. Like my dad didn't he like liked that I was multifaceted musically, but in his car it was sports talk radio or classic rock. And with my mom, it was like. <laughs> You got to know who Andrew Lloyd Webber is. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's funny. Right. Well, what, you, what you can kind of learn, you know, story selling and 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 you know, drama through through you know, musicals and stuff. Yeah, you can. I mean, and ultimately, I figured out from a pretty early age, which is why I eventually ended up in a film program and history <laughs> program that I was a narratively driven dude, like. Most of the ways that I intake uh, life and the type of music I listen to or art I digest in general is narrative-based. And if it's not built around a narrative, then I construct one in my own brain when I see it or when I listen to it. And so uh, all of that stuff is probably finds its roots in the soil of growing up near my mom, who just wanted to teach me about Broadway and why La Mis was the best thing that God had ever granted the world of Broadway. <laughs> And and you you guys you bring that to your songwriting as well too with with Penny and Sparrow too right? We do. Uh, if you're specifically talking about La Miz, we definitely do. We, for whatever reason, that story has uh, held both of us raptured for a long time, and so mm-hmm. we decided to dedicate until we run out of principal characters. We dedicate uh, one song to the main characters of uh, that musical on each record, and so. Uh, again, it, you're going to have to call us out and say we're being idiots if we get to, like, <laughs> second man at the barricade. Right, <laughs> right exactly. Uh, well, I mean, do you and Kyle both bring something um, different musically to the band? Absolutely. Uh, we could not do this job without one another. It is a, in this case, a healthy symbiotic relationship because we are uh, split down the middle in terms of what we bring to the table. Mm-hmm. I have... Uh, with the exception of maybe one time, never written one single musical piece of uh, any of our stuff. And Mm -hmm. Kyle, with the exception of a few words here or there, hasn't written any of the lyrics. Uh So Kyle and I, Kyle comes together with me and sends me a voicemail or a voice memo of him noodling around on the guitar, singing or humming unintelligible vowel sounds over (laughs) a melody that he created. 
And I literally get to take that and go into Word World and treat it like a Mad Lib lesson. And it's a creative writing assignment for me to where I get to say, this sounds uh, somber or celebratory or mm-hmm. erotic. And how many syllables do I have to convey that per line? What feels like the chorus? And so that's how we've written um, more or less 98% of the songs with very few outliers. Hmm. And then, so, and then you guys moved uh, to Alabama last year to record your last album with John Paul White as producing it. Um, Correct. And, and this, house, this house that you guys were living at the time, um, you're still in Alabama and he's in, in Texas, but back in Texas. But that, that house kind of played an important role in, in the next uh, album, right? It did. In between stops and tour dates and tour cycles, we literally spent our first Alabama summer there boiling mm-hmm. and <laughs> trying to just figure out ways to keep cool and relax in this house mm-hmm. and and just wait to go back out on tour. And we didn't right. have time really to get another job, so we would mm-hmm. just post up and practice and sing together. Mm-hmm. And there was this back den in our house that was carpeted and had this uh, really busted old uh, masonry fireplace and it was flat and it was the shadiest part of the house because there was trees all around that outside window. And so no real sunlight got in there unless you wanted it to. Mm-hmm. And so we set up uh, that same recording rig that we used to record the first EP. And we started cutting these demos of these songs that we were falling in love with. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R N I N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T A L K A N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T O S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news? Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. 
That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash ETM for your extended 30-day free trial. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. And we knew that they weren't going to go on the record that we were recording with John Paul. It was going to be its own thing. They felt different. They felt all in the same vein with each other, but different than anything we'd written. And the plan was, hey, let's demo out an entire new album. And then we'll take these demos, go into the studio, and we'll redo them. We'll we sure. polish them. Sure. Uh, we'll rewrite a bunch of shit, and then we'll go from there. Mm. And inevitably, we, we fell in love with all the um, the peccadillos on each song. Like, you can hear Becca making dinner. You can hear my dog uh, running around, like, knocking into a mic stand. <laughs> you can hear a door shut in the middle of a dead silent moment in a song called Moniker that we hated at first and now we love it because it's accidentally in the right time signature and perfect uh, percussive moment. So all of that stuff, uh, it grew on us and the demos comprise the skeleton of this new record. Right. And so, and the new record is called Wendigo. Wendigo. So what, what, what is Wendigo about? And uh, you know, kind of what, what you, you mentioned all that, the, how you wrote the song tonight, but what was the inspiration about it and what, what are some of the themes in, on, on the album? Uh, we sent this press release thing out, right? And it's, it's mm-hmm. the thing yeah. that, sadly, I think maybe five people are ever going to read. And uh, no, uh, six, six people. I read it. Oh, thank God. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, well, <laughs> long and short of it is, yeah. I like what we wrote there because I feel like it does a decent job of mm-hmm. uh, talking about the record, but... I think it's a study in fear. I think it's a study in um, what are the things that scare us? Are they worthwhile in terms of causing us fear? Should we be scared about them at all? Mm-hmm. And it, essentially, like a lot of the songs in this record meander in and around dark corners of stuff mm-hmm. that we are scared about in life, whether it be death or doubt or faith or the loss of love or whether or not we're ever going to actually get love that's worth a shit. And we talk about that in and throughout the record and really try and examine and label what is the root of what I'm scared of? And once I label it and bring it out into the light, does it really have teeth or is it really something pretty? Um, which I think was a, a fun experiment for me as someone who wrote the words of it and a really cool experiment for Kyle who has to build that soundscape only that has both uh, moments of spooky, weird, creepy darkness mm-hmm. and moments of like uplifting and looping hope. Uh-huh. And so, I, honestly, that was what the song was about in its entirety. The name was birthed out of our love for uh, the creepy macabre weird as well, which is in Algonquin folklore, it's a shapeshifter. It's this really weird skeletal creature that at times, depending on which folklore you read, uh, eats people. And at times uh-huh. it just shifts skin and haunts people up in the north. But it is... Uh, it's an, a really beautiful word to say, mm-hmm. and we we latched on to it because um, just like any and all creatures of the deep, uh, it's not that it's real, but at one time or another, depending on who you ask, it scared people witless, and that affected how they lived. And so right. we want to talk about the things in this life that do the same thing for us. Like, yeah, we don't really believe in the Sasquatch anymore, but we 
we are pretty terrified of death and, and loss and hurt. And so why not shine the same flashlight you would on Sasquatch on those things? Sure. And, you know, well, and one of the things, too, the, you, you mentioned in the, in the press release, the quote I liked was, they they turn the lights off on purpose and hunt for what's really there in the dark. I mean, so that's kind of what you're saying too is just kind of, kind of how we all kind of search for things like that, right? Or look, or has introspective kind of look at ourselves, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like most kids had this moment in their life or a big season, or if you're like me, it was lasted a little longer than it should have, where you were terrified of the dark. <laughs> yeah, but there's there's a stretch of my kitchen that you had to walk about like. 12 yards to get from the kitchen to the playroom when I was a kid. Mm. And I remember being terrified and I would intentionally leave the, because it was dark and mm. no sun got back there. And I remember I would leave the fridge open because the light would shine <laughs> in the hallway. And my mom would get pissed because I, you know, moms don't want you to do that. Exactly. And eventually it became this game where I was like, no, you need to sack up and shut the fridge and <laughs> walk slowly instead of wanting to run, even mm. though, like, it was sort of sweaty and you, right. you don't want to do it. And so I, I started trying to, to beat what was there by slowly walking through the dark tunnel instead of, like, leaving the fridge light on. And so in a um, – without waxing too poetic, I feel like I – don't, I don't know why we don't handle stuff like that as adults the way that we mm-hmm. used to handle it as kids. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, this is going to be unbearably hard for just a few <laughs> seconds until I realize there's nothing to be scared of. So it's almost like musical immersion therapy. Right. And it's, and I, like I mentioned before, we, we started recording that, I, you know, that I, I've been listening to this album the last week or so nonstop, and I, I really love it a lot. Um, are all 14 of those songs going to be on the completed album? That's correct. Wow. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's quite a bit of songs writing and song making including the 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 last album too it is uh again it's not something that we really turn off i mean it's weird i'm I'm talking to you from my house in alabama on the first summer where i've been in the same place for two months in (laughs) years right and uh that's kind of a funny thing to report because we've just been on the road right we've been uh, going different places playing different places recording albums along the way in different cities and that has been great and difficult, and this right. album was born out of um, trying to rest, but still trying to grapple with the fact that our life sort of changed overnight from having regular jobs mm-hmm. and doing this as a hobby to, oh my God, we all live in our cars and we're traveling around the nation, and oh my God, it's working, and oh my God, what do we do now? <laughs> and so us grappling with all of that at the end of a, our first busy season um, – or I mean that that was sort of what the the demos came out of was that heart place, hmm. right? And uh, do you guys have a new video? Your videos are really interesting usually. So uh, do you guys have a video coming out for for this uh, album? We do. We got a few. The goal would be okay. to slowly chip away, and throughout the co- the course of the first year of the record, we'd love to have some video presence for every mm-hmm. song. And we've mm-hmm. never done that before, but this one in particular. We unleashed a buddy to go to this huge aquarium, and all that we really told him was, we want you to shoot jellyfish, and we want it to be dark and spooky and weird and pretty. And also, can you make it like one of those 1990s car commercials with a bouncing ball for lyrics? <laughs> and uh, what he gave us was the exact psychedelic weird aquarium funk trip that we asked for. Oh, so, so the one that's on your website, that's, so that's your legit video for, for that song then, right? Yeah, that's our legit video. For double art. <laughs> and we've got one that's entirely narrative yeah. based and uh, serves as sort as sort of a uh, short film, mm-hmm. uh, it's a scary movie. And we've got other ones that are in the, the tank that are totally different than that. And again, I, it'd be really neat to look up in the next uh, couple years and release a big collection of all of these. Well, see, there, there you're using your uh, film theory right there. Yeah, in a way, I suppose maybe my grandmother won't be too mad at me for not uh, using my UT degree. But uh, <laughs> as long as I can say, like, hey, I did something with it. Right, exactly. So you got, and you guys are heading out on tour when the album comes out in September. And, and this time around, but you guys are headlining a little bit more bigger venues than you have before. Uh, is, there are. A diff- is there a different mindset um, when you play bigger venues uh, with, any, with the new music or any, any of your music? Uh, thankfully, man, I consider we consider it a victory that uh, we play 
we have played in our careers over the past few years uh, very small rooms where there were seven people showing up mm-hmm. in a city and then be totally surprised and an unexpected 500 would show up and we didn't know that we had a presence like that in the city. Mm-hmm. And what we figured out early on was like, look, if if this career is three years long, six months long, or 36 years long, uh, I would really, really, really like to say that uh, we gave anybody that showed up the best show that we could possibly physically muster. And so we sang our ass off in front of six people, and we sang our ass off in front of sold-out crowds of um, over a 1,000. And mm-hmm. that's a really exciting thing. And also, uh, to your point, this tour finds us in rooms that are bigger than we've ever been in before from a headlining standpoint. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, nerve-wracking in a degree just because it's like, oh, my God, I've seen uh, Glenn Hansard and Iron and Wine in this room <laughs> as, sure. as right. a, concert goer and right. we're playing it how is that even uh reality mm-hmm. and so you you know all the same first day jitters come when you're in a room of that size uh if your head's really screwed on straight mm-hmm. but uh the i guess the preeminent uh emotion is just excitement it's just straight joy like oh my god i get to do this for a living Right, right. And I mean and that's quite an ascension just just in the last several years that you guys have made too. True. Uh, if I think about it too long, I go cross-eyed and I'm questioning <laughs> how in the hell it happened, and uh, I'm I'm not about to look the gift horse in his mouth. So right. Thanks. So did you did you actually grow up in in Austin? Uh, no, Austin? Sir, I grew up in Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth. We, okay. I did a lot of growing up in Austin because I was in mm-hmm. college at the time, but mm-hmm. when I was a kid, it was in Fort Worth. Gotcha. What, what was one of the best live shows you've seen in in, in Austin? Uh, in Austin, one of the best live shows I've seen uh, would be – I went to this fundraiser for the Midwives of America, um, okay. which sounds really, really strange. <laughs> uh, but my buddy took me, and he works for this big concert, um, I, I guess like a publication place. And he mm-hmm. he's like, hey, I want to take you to the show. Don't look anything into it. Just show up with me. Come on. And so I went with him to the Paramount Theater where we get to play in Austin – and I saw an acoustic uh, show with Sam Bean from Iron and Wine and Glenn Hansen. Mm. From oh, well, dude, yeah, oh, awesome. Yeah, and uh, it was all because Sam Bean's wife, they uh, live in Austin, and he mm. was, or she was a midwife. And mm. so they did this concert to raise money for the Midwives of America Foundation. And that meant that I got to see an hour-long acoustic set from Glenn Hansard and then a 90-minute acoustic set from Sam Bean, and uh, I died. <laughs> that's that, that's a very cool one. I like that. That's a great one. And you, and you, I didn't even ask you that ahead of time. You had that loaded there. That was, that was great. It's easy to remember when it's that good. When it's that good, exactly. Um, well, speaking of like you know older you know theaters, you guys opened for uh, our friend Drew Holcomb a few months ago too at the at the uh, Ryman. I heard people just went nuts for your set too. Uh, it was very beautiful. It was one of those moments where I walked off stage crying, and that was pretty outlandish, uh, <laughs> which isn't saying too much for me because I cried all the time. Right. But in reality, that was a whole new level. I mean, it's it's the mother church, you know, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, I have dreamed about playing venues like that, let alone ever thought that I'd have a standing ovation and walk off into the arms of my wife crying. <laughs> right. So, uh, so living in Alabama, are you uh, are you college and went to UT? Are you a college football fan? I am a college football fan. How, I'm in how is Longhorn, how, regardless how is of being a transplant here in I was Alabama, say, how, I'm near Bottle Country. <laughs> Can you publicly uh, root for Texas there in Alabama? I can, but it helps being a 205-pound bearded guy. Um, <laughs> right. It might be a little bit different if 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 I was shaped a bit different. Right. But I'm also not uh, I'm not too ornery when it comes to being a fan. Mm-hmm. I'm, right. uh, I'm I support my burnt orange Longhorns and all of their endeavors, but it, it also yeah. not get like used to. It won't completely destroy my world if they lose. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Uh, so last thing I have for you. So. Um, one of the albums you guys had out recently, to, last year, uh, and I'm first of all, I'm a total Christmas music nerd. So, and I recently discovered you guys actually re- released an album last year, Christmas songs. Um, yeah. 
So what was that about, and um, why did you guys want to kind of – why did you think you wanted to make a holiday album? Well, honestly, Christmas is important to us. We love that season, and those songs are iconic regardless mm-hmm. of where you are with faith. For yeah. us, it was something that we would always wanted to do, and we sort of promised our folks that we would do. Mm. And it was, it was finally making good on a promise. We were like, man, we've always loved to cover these mm-hmm. um, old hymns, these songs. We fused together our own songs with Christmas music before, so why why not just finally go through with it and do it? And honestly, we just had time, and it sounded like a blast. And so in July in Texas, we stopped in the middle of that month and took two weeks to make a Christmas record. <laughs> Christmas in July. Yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> hey, like, I love it. It's my, it's my new, it, will, it will be on rotation uh, this Christmas coming up, so I'm really excited about well, that. Well, thank you once again for helping pay my light bill. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, uh, where can people find uh, Penny and Sparrow's music and the new album, uh, Wendigo? You can pre-order our stuff through Pledge Music. It's on all of our social media stuff. And there's some pretty sweet perks if you order it now. Off the Magnolia Record Club, if you subscribe mm-hmm. before the next, like, six days, that's Drew's mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Then you get, uh, we press the first, I think, thousand, maybe a few more, mm-hmm. in uh, a white vinyl, which looks pretty damn slick. And... Um, yeah, I saw, I saw the picture of it. It looks, it looks really good. We like it anyway. Right, right. And you so find when, all when, the normal social media stuff. And uh, right. honestly, right now, if you want when to go, Pledge Music is the place to go. Well, and uh, when is when is the album actually coming out? September first. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Andy. We totally appreciate it. Dude, thank you so much for having me. It was a true honor. To, to know that people give a damn this much at, at uh, about live music is a really nice thing. So thank you for actually listening to the record, actually knowing it, and asking great questions. Hold the way you feel it Put a robe on everything And it ain't right But you crown emotion Instead of holding me as king It's only thin, it's only pain Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. 